Hello there, everyone. This is Soul Super Seventeen here, and well, let me get through this like usual. I do not own this picture, and this is a non-paid video. All right, okay. So let me get through some things real quick. Um, I know I'm gonna be, I said I was gonna be working on my Asta Dragon, Sl you know, Fire Dragon Slayer one, and then my um Asta Demon. I mean, no, Son of Sparta one. Because I promised this video was going to be coming out right after I made the other one. So, I was going to make it sometime last night. But I just, eh. um, it just happened to be not. Um, Thursday, I mean, Friday, I mean, tomorrow, I may make a video. But I'm going to be working on my schoolwork all day tomorrow and maybe tonight. No, I'm not very late tonight, just until like 12 and then... Maybe around 12.30, I will make a video of the Fire Dragon Slayer one. With my Asta, what if. Alright. Uh, okay, so I went through some... You know, just basically, I went through some stuff and in my last video. And I already said about Jiro's the ship. Um, Morgana's son is Ryuji. Um, the Persona 5 protagonist, Joker, I think his name was Rin, but let me just double check because I wrote, I have it somewhere down. It was Ren, not Rin, <laughs> my apologies. But yeah, so I had you and Yosuke, um, you, Yusuke, not Yosuke, you know, be his teachers, one teaches him how to use daggers. And the other one teaches him how to use swords, which is you. Ren has been teaching him how to use daggers and being a thief. And in this one, we're going to go to visit Kane Bakugo. But he looks like more like a barbarian version of him. <laughs> um, yeah. Just, but also, I do not own this picture, and this is not a paid video. Alright. So. Hold on. Never mind, find my dad was coming in my room. Sorry. Anyways, let's get into this video. This is what Deku who use personas. Or I forget the title, but anyways. Um Yeah, so after basically Deku and Futaba is celebrating you know, Deku has Oh yeah, I never said I never, you know, said Deku has taken on Wakaba. You know, Futaba Wakaba. So it's Deku Wakaba now. Um, let me just double check, see if her name's right. Okay, um, but anyways. Um, what happens, though, while they're celebrating, they did, like, have, like, people come over that knew him. So people that were around. Oh, Wakaba was her mother's name, Sakura. Futaba Sakura. Hmm. I guess. Oh. Huh. Yeah, so. I guess Deku's name is. is Zuku Sakura. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. But while they're, you know, celebrating, all people are coming in. They're telling Zuku Gan to. They, you know, into UA, and he's in a hero course. If he, they're like, you know, they're regulars, and you know, Sanjuro, Sujuro, okay, Sojuro asks, "What really? He got in?" He goes, "Yeah, <laughs> um, that's what told me." You know, but I gotta go do something before UA. It starts in a couple of days, so you know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave tomorrow. And Ryuji's there, and he says, "Good, but we should probably work on trying to." And he goes, "Yeah, I know." So Deku says he's gonna go out for a bit, real quick. Um, he's gonna go over to the local recycle shop, see if they have anything he can use to repair something. So Sojiro and Futaba just say, "All right, don't be out too late." So he leaves. He goes over to the recycle place, and 
on Persona 5, and uh, the owner of the shop saying, ah, Zuku, how have you been? He was like, good, I just need um something to repair something. Let's say grapple and hook. I've made it a long time ago, and I'm trying to upgrade it, but I just need to repair it first, so you mind if I, um, see if you got anything I can repair it with? And he was, ah, yes, I do have some stuff around here that could probably help. So what's broken? Deku says, um, the mechanism to pull him up to something is broken, along with the, the, me um, the spring shooter. He goes, oh, okay, I got some stuff here. So, you know, he goes into the back, he gets it, he gives it to De Zuku, and he asks, um, how much, and he goes, oh, consider it a gift since you've gone to UA. <laughs> Futaba and some of the customers I overheard been talking about it. Good job. He goes, yeah. And he goes, but how did you get into the hero course? Your quirk was, and he goes, like, um, my, uh, quirk was a late bloomer. <laughs> I have elements. And he goes, really, let me see, is he then, like, she has fire, then lightning in another hand, ice in another hand, wind, you know, little, like, winds coming around his hand, basically. He doesn't show the light, or the psychic, or the dark elements, he just shows the main, like, um, you know, ones, and that's it, or, like, the, he doesn't show any of, like, any other ones besides just, like, the four elements, basically. And that's it, because he doesn't want no one to know. Um, but yeah. So, at that time, um, he, uh, he goes over. And he goes back home. He basically sh tells Futaba that, you know, he got everything. He's going to be working on it. And, you know, Futaba says, alright, need me to help you with it? And he goes, like, if you want to. So, I mean, she just tells him to bring it down. So he goes upstairs to his room. He brings down the grappling hook. And, um, well, you know, Yuji is, you know, just sitting there watching. And, yeah, Futaba and him are just going to work while, you know, she's taking orders, you know, helping out so along with Sojiro. And I do apologize for my parents. You know, sorry, guys, but they're, my dad's loud and talking, so is my mom. Everyone in my family is loud. <sighs> Uh, but anyways, um, so that's what happens, and, you know, he, okay, yeah, I just don't want to hear you guys hear them, so give me a minute. Alright, I'm sorry about that, everyone. Um, that was a long, like, wait time. Um, I was, while well, my parents were talking, and my dad was just yelling for no reason, or just talking really loud. I, uh, was just playing the game a while, but anyway, so... We were. I was talking about how Futaba and Deku were basically fixing up the, you know, the grappling hook. And so, how they are basically, they work on it until like 10 o'clock. And it was right closing time. So, everyone, like no one was coming in anymore. And they decided to call it a night. So, after that, you know, after, you know, Sojiro and, well, Futaba, you know, saying goodnight to Deku, Deku just, you know, closes up, does whatever he has to do, and then, you know, Aruji just starts to talk to him. goes, we need to find somebody who's going to be our third, you know, member. Maybe we can, you know. And he goes, yeah, but we don't, we only got two days. No. Three, maybe. Okay. So, three to four. So, we gotta do it, like, now. The only reason why I had to prolong it is to get used to getting more higher up and getting more personas. I mean, I'm a level one. You know, he had it. He was, like, only, like, level 24, I said last time. He went up to, like, level 25. So, basically, I have Deku now since it's been, like, ten months. Deku's at a level, um, since he's been going, very, like, not even increasing that much, even with Tartarus and the TV world, along with, you know, Mementos, he can't go through because he had a dead end. So, oh, all right.
I sneezed. Sorry. But anyway, so Deku is around a level 30. He's around level 30. And where he's at is he's basically has gotten at least um, personas of level 28 and 27 through that range. He's gotten a he's got a claw clofo as one of her person as one of his personas. He's basically still has Arsene. Um, Izanagi and Thanatos. No, but then he did get rid of Jack Frost. Basically, he got rid of Jack Frost. And um, Jack O' Lantern alone. And another one was the two headed dog Othros. So he has replaced them with Anu and An Anzu. I, 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 ugh, sorry, I, Isis, and Clothos. Saying the name wrong, I know, I apologize, but that's how I, 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 I just, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's who he has replaced it, you know, replaced them with, which is pretty impressive, um, Ryuji says. So, he just says, we're gonna have to find somebody, and... It's going to have to be real soon. And he goes, yeah, I know. So, after, you know, a good night's sleep, Deku and Ryuji go, you know, open up the shop for Futaba. You know, get everything ready. She's like, she comes in, she says thank you to him. He says it's no problem. So, so they said they're going to go out and see, see the palace. See if they can find anybody that could help them with. And um, just in this one right now, Kirishima and Bakugo do know each other, but Bakugo has been bullying Kirishima until this is all like over. So yeah, so they go back to his palace. They enter it. They didn't need to go there, but now they're there. They see that it's been a little bit more empty. Like, there's, like, a lot of stuff that's been moved. And De Deku, well, Fane and Sly just say to themselves, like, I don't say out loud, it goes like, huh, it's pretty empty. They even found a way to sneak in. So they go around, and they they didn't notice that there was a basement. <laughs> so they go, and, well, they see what, they see something bad. Well, well basically, what Ryuji says, he goes like, they see, like, Bakugo, like, people that are just, like, in, like, basically, like, doing work and being, like, belittled by somebody who says you're all worthless. Okay, I dropped my phone. <laughs> uh, sorry, but, yeah, so, they just hear, like, some knight saying, you're all worthless and crap and all that, and there's one person that just says, hey, you're not manly, and um, it's a... Guy with spiky red hair and shark, you know, shark teeth, and well, they say what the, and they're just going there just to get information, not you know to really do nothing. Deku is already too high level. Ryuji has been you know leveled up. Now I never talk about his persona. His persona is more like a thief, basically. Instead of like you know, um. You know, Morgana's persona. There's a persona is more like a thief with a with a um with a cane that has a question mark. Yes, I'm making a reference towards him. And it does has like a mask and a hat on. So you know and the whole entire outfit is basically all like blue and dark so yeah so basically you know Zuku was impressed by that and that's why he says huh so I guess the whole entire thing called Sly works huh we usually laughed at that I forgot to mention but anyways okay so basically what happens 
Um, they just like hear a guard say, "Shut up, Kirishima!" And boom, you know, they just hit him, and he's like quirk hardened. And he goes, "What the? Why is is that someone real?" He goes, "No, that's that can't be. It's only the cognitive version of who the person is. Even though he gets belittled, he won't like let them like stop him." He goes, "Okay, maybe he maybe he has a persona. We gotta find him." He goes, "Yeah." So they, you know, they just leave the area and just run out. And when they do, they get a text from Ren. Ren says, I got something I need to show you that could help you with your, you know, to help me out sometime. He goes, all right. So they meet up with Ren and they ask, and Ren asks, oh, you're here so quickly. How? He goes, I was at my, I was at the palace. I was like, oh, <laughs> Well, um, let me take you down to the, um, the school, the, basically the area where the personas, hold on, um, okay. I'm trying to find out, okay, this, um, Center Street, Central Street. So that's where they go. They go over to it, as then they find. He shows them a. He shows Deku a, you know, airsoft, you know, gun area. You know, he walks into the place and he goes, "Hey, <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it?" And. Well, and basically, it's, um, Mu, uh, Iwa, Iwa's still there, he goes, oh, Ren, <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it, he goes, yeah, <laughs> after the whole entire Phantom Thief thing, he goes, yeah, <laughs> and man, you're my best customer at the time, who's this, he goes, oh, this is, well, <laughs> a friend of mine, he needs a, uh, well, a realistic one, he goes, all right, first timer. He was like, "Yeah, all right, here you go." And he he goes in the back after a few minutes. He finds basically a realist, well, a art, you know, basically an airsoft, realistic. You know, it's basically you know it's just supposed to be like airsoft BBs and everything. That's it. It's not supposed to be real. So, it, but he's make it so good it looks real. So yeah. So. He was like, what the? Is this? He goes, nah, kid. It's just, this is all fake. It's, I just make it so real. It looks. I mean, I just make it to the point where it just looks so real. I spent a lot of time and money on that. Well, that's an older one. I made a long time ago. But, hey, you can keep it. Weird charge. He was really, he was like, yeah. I have a feeling you're going to be a, uh, a phantom thief. So, you know. <laughs> a phantom needs a, you know, needs a range weapon, doesn't he? And Deku just smiles, he goes, yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Alright. You know, so after that, when they get out of that, you know, little alleyway, and, you know, Deku sees somebody with spike red, spike red hair, and then you get gets an explosion in broad daylight, and it's Bakugo. He goes, it basically, he hears Bakugo goes, how about you shut it, you shitty hair? You know, and all that, you know, to Kirishima. And Kirishima says, how much are you not... You're not even manly. All you do is just harm people for your cork. And you think you're better than everyone else? <laughs> I'm more of a man than you. I know, actually. Somebody actually could be more of a man than you. And then you just had enough. He just basically gives Ren the bag and give, and basically gives his bag with Ryuji in it. And that could just crack his neck. He just goes, I am not in the mood for this. So he just walks over. Bakugo sees him and goes like, Hey, nerd, what are you? And then Deku just suddenly punches Bakugo, uppercuts him, basically. And then immediately throws a left hook right into his freaking stomach. Sending him, like, back a little bit in the midair. Because, like I said, I made Deku train. His body's physically fit. He's really strong. And he, and plus his level affects him in real life. Because no matter what, you know, his cognitive, well, his, basically, his rebellion form as him himself, basically. So, yeah. And he just says, Shut it, Bakugo. 
so you did. And besides, as he looks behind and see Kirishima, he goes like, this guy's probably more a man than you. Whoever, you don't try to explode a girl when you uh, when they don't have a strong quirk. <laughs> and Bobby gets up, you know, just coughing. <laughs> he just goes, <laughs> what the? How did you? He goes like, oh, poor Buck. Go. Can't handle that I'm stronger than you. <laughs> Pathetic. He takes he basically grabs Kirishima. Well I know he basically grabs Kirishima's like shoulder and just says, Come with me. I wanna try I wanna talk to you. So you know. They uh they walk, then like run, you know, follows. So yeah. Bago just saying like what the heck is happening? How? How is that nerd? Ugh. No, that's just it. His body is like, he just like, 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 shaking out of anger. And so what happens is Deku's been, well, Deku just like gets there. Like, he's, him and Kirishima are talking. He says, hey, um, Kirishima, right? It was... I mean, based no, 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 no. De Deku can't let him know. Um, so basically, he goes, my name is Izuku Sakura. Yours? And um, Kirishima. He goes, oh, all right, Kirishima. I have a question to ask you. Would you like to help me out with something to, to change this guy? To change Bakugo around? He goes, really? He goes, yeah, change him. Personality-wise. All right, he goes. <laughs> yeah, that guy ain't manly. If I can help change him, then you know I'll be glad to. And this is the only way I could think of. Like I didn't want to. Um, but I will have like. Since I'm, you know, I made it to the point where they couldn't do it before the UA entrance his name. I have to. I have to rush this a little bit, but. Yeah, so basically, um, you know, he they go over and all of a sudden, like, Kirishima gets a message on his phone, like, a bang sound. It's like, what the? So he looks at it and he sees his, uh, his phone. He has, like, two different apps. He goes, what? He goes, Deku looks at them. I mean, he, he looks at the apps. It's not two. It's, um, he sees this. The same thing, Deku pulls out his phone. He goes... Persona, stats, TV, or TV, then W, and Mementos. He goes, <laughs> well, it's like you and me, I have the same apps. He goes, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, what's, what are they? He goes, like, follow me. And Ryuji, you know, give, catch up, give him his bag, and then his, basically his, God, basically the, the bag, with Ryuji in it, I mean not Ren, Ryuji, Ren, Ren caught up with him, you know, giving back him the bag with Ryuji in it, and the uh, whole entire airsoft gun that's supposed to look fake, I mean that looks really real, <coughs> um, sorry, um, weather's changing, and around this time I get, you know, cough and everybody knows, but anyways, so yeah, so what happens is that Deku shows him his old school, saying, this is my old school. I got into UA. He goes, really? Me too. He goes, like, huh. So, I have a question to ask you. Are you tired of being called useless? Or, you know, your quirk is not strong, and you're just weak and all that? And he, he says, yeah, I'm tired of it. And he goes, all right. Um, follow me. So he just activates the app, and they go into the med of you know, the cognitive world, and he they see Kirishima sees a crown. He goes like, what? What the? What is that? He goes, you know, he basically said there's a school, and he goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> this is Bakio Kotsky's castle, and we're gonna steal something called a treasure. But first, we gotta help you level up. He goes, what do you mean by that? Also, I know they get fatigued really easily, but I'm making it aware because they have quirks in this, they're not really going to get fatigued, you know? So, no, the whole entire fatigue process is not, you know, in there. So, I'm going to have him become really strong really quick. So, basically, they go in. 
he has him just wander in the castle and the guards like who are still there just like see him and he says hey how do you escape the cell you know and all that get back in there and I, you know he was like what because you're your pathetic worthless being you should be underneath the king's boo like all the time and everything and you know and he's just getting Kirishima just getting pissed he you know activates his like hardening quirk and they say oh fight it back huh they hit him and his quirk you know breaks and he's like no and Deku like hit the whole entire thing was trying to get him to activate because of stress and that's the way I think they always do and like a big amount of stress and you know, pain from them so basically, Kirishima is going through this. He and then his like he's hearing a voice in his head. He goes like, "Are you gonna let them keep telling you that you're worthless? You're not a man. You're not manly enough." You know, basically, this is um. He goes and Kirishima goes no, and he just punches the ground and it cracks. He goes, "I won't. I'm not scared. I'm not weak. I'm strong. I will always be strong." Yes, I am thou, thou art I, I am the one within your soul. As then all of a sudden, a tattoo appears on Kirishima's basically forearm. As he just, as it starts glowing on fire and he just yells out, PERSONA! And then all of a sudden, a big gust of, you know, light comes around him. And what he's, and this is basically... Rebellion, like everyone else, is gonna be a rebellion, but Deku is the only one that has all like all three, you know, death, you know, fighting against death, uh, looking forward to be one's true self, and everyone else is gonna be like, you know, I forgot to mention that, you know, all rebellion form. So basically, punk rock stars all the time. So basically, Kirishima, his hair is spiked up still, but it's in a mohawk state, and basically, he just um has. Basically, they say it's like his shirt. I mean, he does like his shirt. I mean, his out his hero costume, in like real life. But it's more like this. It has like it's the whole entire shirt is like ripped like in. Like his hero costume wasn't until he ripped it. So basically, but there's like a scratch mark going down on it, and basically it's just like a whole bunch of holes in it, it along with his pants. But, you know, his pants are, has holes all around, and his boots, you know, spiked. He even has, like, um, a spiked collar around him. And, and his persona, I thought about it, since, you know, he has, like, short, like, teeth and everything. And I watch way too many TikToks with shark, with just him, like, being, like, having, like, shark, shark stuff. I just thought, why not just make it a shark? But the arms are made of metal. Like, metal like arm, shark, cyborg, uh, oh, and the only thing he says, basically, I don't know the name. So I'm gonna say, like, uh, I was like, I thought I'd try to think of the name, but I was saying, like, um, I can think of maybe, like, something to do with, like, Ryuji's persona, the Captain, the Captain Park, the Captain Part. <laughs> so, like, Captain, um, Sh shovel? No, not shovel. Um, no, no red. No, like Captain Red Riot. <laughs> yeah, Captain Red Riot. Basically, it was, and basically it had the whole tire like it has like a jacket on its like shoulders and everything, and he goes, and it says "man" on the back of it, and he just goes, "Oh yeah, this is what it means to be truly manly." That's what you know, Kirishima says, and Deku comes out. Basically, like it is only like, in the hall, so he comes around around the corner. and goes like, <laughs> "Nice persona." <sighs> Time to and they say it's you, and then he just Deku just spins a dial and says, "Persona, are set," and it just pop. He just comes out and he just says, "All right, then," you know. So we're just gonna name his code name Shark. So he just, you know, his codename is just going to be Shark. So he goes like, all right, Shark, let's do this thing. And he goes, wait, my name? He goes like, no, it's Shark. I was like, oh, whatever. And he, so, yeah, so basically, the, you know, those, um, the knights start to change into their shadow beings. And Kirishima goes like, so what do we do here? He goes like, find the weakness. 
and well, take them down. Don't worry, these aren't real people. They're just uh, the emotions of people's souls, basically. They just say, so doesn't it hurt them? They're like, nah. He just says, yeah. So basically what happens is, Deku and Kirishima, um, the weakness of them is basically like, they find out it is like darkness, you know, uh, basically one of Arsene's skills. And you know, so they just, they take them down really quickly. And all right, so we're going to have to go through the whole entire, after taking it down, um, you know, Deku says we're going to have to like go through the whole entire palace to make sure Kirishima can, um, you know, level up. He goes, huh? He goes, that's why you have the, you know, the app that says stats. And he goes like, oh, okay. So what we do is like, oh, don't worry. So yeah, Eth, um, that was his name. That was the name. Um, so basically, um, hold on. I think this may be for me. Okay, never mind. It wasn't for me, but. Anyways, um, so what happens is, you know, they go through the whole entire palace, like, and they're just fighting on. Kirishima is ranking up everything real quick. He goes, how are we taking down these enemies so quickly? You know, and they're even finding items and, mon and you know, they're even getting money from the palaces. And they're like, oh, it's easy. Um, I've been at this for about 10 months, so we're going to have to be quick on this. We're going to have to uh, try to... Well, do something to him, but I don't know how. He goes, oh, we're going to do, you know, as Ryuji says, oh, we're going to do, you know, send him a calling card. He goes, like, huh, good one, Sly. So, just like the old Phantom Thieves. He goes, wait, wait we're thieves? I mean, that ain't like a hero. He goes, like, shark, this is how we're going to change him. We have to steal something of his. I'll show you what it is. So, after they go through the whole entire thing, the whole entire palace, Ryuji has gone up to, like, a level 10 by now. And what happens is they show, like, the glowing orb that's flowing in the air. He goes, like, what's this? He goes, this is his heart. The key thing that makes all of this, the castle, the one that drives his palace, the thing that makes him, Bakio Kotsky, what it, you know, basically is driving him to be who he is. <sighs> I don't know why he's like this, but we have the fight him so we're gonna have to you know get you know basically send out the con card to like two days from now and then we're gonna because we have to level you up because i don't know how strong he's gonna be he goes right so basically they leave and you know they, he shows him mementos you know they go I and mean, he doesn't like go in it but then you know they go to a tv like, they go back to his place because Deku has a TV in his room. And they go into the TV world. You know. And this is like... This isn't taking long. How about... Yeah, it is sort of... It, because his place is actually near his school too. So it wasn't taking him long to get over there. Um, but the Manentos did take a little bit. So... It took like about 25 minutes. And then like to get back to his world. I mean, to get back over to his house. It took about like another like 15 minutes. So... And it is like all in the morning. So basically though what happens is then after that they go into the I mean they they go into the TV world. Like they he puts on the app and then he just like hits the TV and it just you know turn I mean basically they can put their hand right through it as they go into it. As then you know he says it's not my first time been being here, but honestly some of the enemies here are weak. So, this is going to be good for you to level up now. It was, alright. And next thing you know, they hear something. Like, something like a, like a sound, like, waddle, like, um, how Teddy sounded. As, you know, Teddy comes out, like, a bear comes out. Um, and I was like, hey, who are you? And he was like, um, who are you? He goes, oh, I'm Teddy. You? Izuku. And then he says, Kirishima. As then, you know, Mark, not Mark, as Ryuji turned, like, he's in his cat form. And you go, I mean, not his cat form, it is like somewhat raccoon, like raccoon, raccoon slash cat, 
like form. He goes, name's Ryuji. And he goes, wait, was that the cat who... He goes, yep, <laughs> nice to meet you. Because Deku did explain who Ryuji is, but Ryuji wasn't talking. He was like, how can he talk? He goes, oh, easy. Um, he always could. <laughs> he goes, yep. So anyways, nice to meet you, Teddy. He was like, oh, nice to meet you too. He goes, hey, can you help us out to get to a, a better place to grind for... XP, money, and any items. He goes, I, oh, yeah, I know a couple of places. Follow me. So, you know, Teddy you know, shows him around, and they spent like two hours there. You know, Kirishima levels up to about level 17. And Deku says, all right, we're, we're good for now. Hey, you know, they got a couple of items that they can sell. You know, some that they use for HP and SP. And, well, you know, Kirishima can still use his persona, you know, in the TV world, you know, they, they still transform to the rebellion phase, and, you know, then, you know, Teddy says, oh, you remind me of my, you know, my sensei, he goes, who, he goes, you, I was like, oh, that's my teacher, and then there was a guy named Yosuke, right, he goes, like, yeah, they were, like, the, a defense, like, detectives, and everything, and he was like, huh, trying to, figure out a mystery he was like yeah crimes actually he was like wait what and teddy explains the whole entire thing as he just says wow my teachers were awesome as kirishima goes like hey do you think they could teach me i mean i know my hammer is just based on my brass like fist basically this face of his fist with um gauntlets all around him and then it's uh, and then his cork can activate on them making him even like tougher and stronger when his punches activate you know he you know, hits them, and his, he, they find out that his persona can use ice, that, and it basically is an ice, it's defensive, and it even has strong attacks, so, that's what it's based around, and, you know, so, that's what they do, and, well, what happens is, is this, uh, you know, Teddy says, I can, I've been in here for a long time since, uh, uh, um, I don't own the name. It's from Atlas, so yeah, I don't know anything from Atlas. They say Juness was, you know, stopped was being used. He goes like, "Oh, huh. wow, that sucks." He goes, "Yeah, so I haven't been around there. I've been in the TV world since. Say all that still come visit me sometimes, but yeah, goes <laughs> all right. So let's go." So basically, Teddy, you know, brings him back over. He says, mm, "You do you have any, like a human form or something?" He goes like, "Oh yeah, I do. I, we just have to unzip from my head." He goes like, "What?" He goes, "Yeah. <laughs> um, do you mind, you know, doing the real world? I have some clothes in here that I've been cleaning." So he was like, "Oh yeah, we don't mind." So basically, you know, Teddy comes with them. Um, or you know, not more. Ryuji comes back to his cat life form. He goes, "So, um, Kirishima." How does it feel to... And he goes, wow, okay, I am not used to that Kirishima screams. I was like, ah, figures. No one's used to a talking cat besides a Zuku. He goes, <laughs> uh, at first I didn't, I wasn't really used to it. I just figured, why not just not act like it? Weird things have been happening to me a lot ever since I became a Persona user. He was like, <laughs> and he goes, yeah, wait, 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 wait. I just realized something Kirishima says to him. You're that guy who saved Bakugo. He goes, yeah. I call him angry Pomeranian. <laughs> Kirishima just laughs at that. But basically, he goes, well, I mean, I bet he'd be a cool guy to hang out with if he wasn't, has such a big ego. Kirishima says, yeah. I was like, anyway, I know. Anyways, um, let's, you know, just Teddy basically un like unzips his head, and then there's like a person in there, and it's the same, like, Teddy hasn't, age at all so he's just like saying hello and it's just the same outfit that he would have had um hold on hold on all right i'm back i'm sorry it's just my uh, mom made something that i love around always christmas time we make special cookies around this time and they're so freaking good oh anyways like, like i was saying um you know, Teddy's having the same outfit that he had in Persona Four Golden. Um, you know, any type of the Persona Four games. Um, I'm gonna go with the latest one, the remake. I think Persona Four Golden remake. That's what I believe it's called. But anyways, um, yeah, he has the same outfit. 
he then, you know, says, all right, let's go see Sensei and Yosuke. Yeah, Yosuke. And, um, but first, Deku says, uh, how, how are your clothes not just, is it hot in there and everything? He was like, oh, yes, extremely. But I, um, don't. I mean, I've been, um, I got something to figure out how to. I mean, like, when my clothes, um, just have, like, a separate dement, like, area. And I put them on before I took off the head. And that's all. It was like, oh, all right. So, you know, they, they walk out for Tyler, who's asked who this is. He says, oh, this is, uh, Teddy. And he knows my teacher, you. And he and Futaba was like, oh, all right, um, you know, just be careful. He goes, all right. So they go over to you and Yosuke, and you is very surprised to see Teddy. He was like, Sensei, have you been? You know, that, you know, they're just catching up, um, you know, and everything, which <laughs> they're just glad to see each other. So after like them talking for about an hour or two, Izuku and Kirishima well, are training. Izuku's training him with swords and um, daggers. And, uh, you know, just to try and find out which um is better for Kirishima besides, you know, just gauntlets. You know, him just, like, throwing punches and everything. So, um, it just works with Kirishima with his, you know, fists and everything. And he was, and that kind of sucked, that good things. But, hey. Waste not what not, he says. <laughs> so, after that, um, you know, he says we're gonna have to bring Teddy back over to, well, we'll come back and get Teddy. We had to go over see my, um, other per teacher called Ren. And he goes like, alright, so, you no, know, they, um, asked, you know, he called up Ren Deku and just asked where is he. he says, oh, he's near, um, that, uh, remember that training, I mean, that lessons you told me that one day, he was like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on my way over to see him. And he was like, oh, we're here. And he goes, oh, then I'll just, you know, so, you know, I'll just come over and talk to you then. And basically, um, when Ren gets over there, you know, him and you and Yosuke talk about it along with Teddy. And Teddy's been saying, oh, I can help him out then since he's... Persona user, and he's going for the TV world. I can help him out doing some things, or finding some things, or give him specific challenge or whatever items I have find that are rare in the TV world. I can give him it, and he goes, "Yeah, that would be a good idea." You know, you Yusuke says, and you know, Ren just says, "Huh, TV world. I wonder what it's like." And you know, Terry just says, "Eh, it's not bad. Foggy, but it seems like those two can see without it. You know, without the glasses on." Which you and Yosuke says, "I wish we had that ability." <laughs> So yeah, but anyways, um, after like all of that discussion, you know, Ren looks looks at Azuku saying, "Have you worked on the?" He goes, "Yeah, it's fixable. I mean, it it was it's almost done. I just need to try to figure out the whole entire um, you know, the the card basically. Um, what we're gonna send to Bakugo, and." And basically, Ren just says, huh, um, how about this? Bakukovsky, for your action for misusing your quirk on the weak and the helpless, we will take your heart. I mean, we'll take your heart and change you. you know, sign the Phantom Thieves. And that is just, as I said, that's kind of like the old school way. I mean, how about we, I mean, it's, that's what they would, Basically, the fan teams usually did, right? As, you know, he says yes, actually. <laughs> he goes, huh. Um, maybe we can say like this. <clears throat> Bakukatsuki, for the actions and the misuse of your quirk, we, the fan teams, have came back out of hiding. And we have decided to change your heart and make you into someone that is more better than who you are now. <laughs> do not think this is a joke, because we will not, we do not joke. Signed, the Phantom Thieves. 
and Kirishima says something like, I'm still not used to this whole entire thing, but, I mean, we have to do this, right? He goes, yeah, we'll go by and show you what he thinks of people. And, well, remember, and was Dendeku's like wondering, he goes, huh, I've been wondering. He says out loud, he says to everyone, there was a room that says, loyal servant slash advisor. He goes, huh? Well, you know, Kirishima says, like, I don't understand what that is, but we'll find out when we uh, go to the, the day. He says, yeah, we got two days. So we'll send it out to, I mean, we'll send it out two days from now. He goes, yeah. So basically, you calls, I mean, not you, Ren calls up an old friend of his. He calls up a famous artist. And that is Yosuke. No, you. Oh. Huh. Yeah, Yosuke. Oh, wow. I think they reused the same name. Um. Um, hold on. Let me double check everything. Give me a minute. Okay. My apologies, everyone. My dad just came in, but yeah, he calls it Yusuke, and I found out the name's Yosuke, so I wasn't even right the first time, Yosuke. Uh, I think I became in just saying Yusuke because it's been the same, almost like same uh, spelling um, way. But yeah, which Kirishima and Deku just says, wait, what? The the famous artist? Yus Yusuke? It was, yeah. I mean, I can ask him to make the calling card again for you guys. So, he hits him up, and, you know, Yosuke and him, you know, just catch, I mean, Yusuke and him just catch up, and he asks about the calling card, you know, can you come by and see? He goes, oh, yes, I'm in Japan right now, where are you? And he just gives him an address, and ten minutes later, you know, they were nearby, so, yeah, he's over there, he says, okay, uh, what do you want? He was like, mm. so Deku just asked, did you have a picture of the old calling card? And he goes, yes, actually. So they show him the old picture of the cone card, and Deku just says, "All right, so I'm gonna keep the hat, but I want to change something." And he goes, "What is it?" He was like, "Um, it's the way that the card um is. It's not just a basically a hat and the mask underneath." I mean, mine, uh, my persona says he pulled, shows him his arm, the tattoos and everything. And he, he rolls it all the way up because that's, I mean, it's because that's what's going to happen. So he basically just shows him and he goes like, oh my, is this, yeah, my personas. They're tattoos and I look like a punk rockster. When I, um, you know, he goes, huh, if we were in Mementos, if I could have, you know, seen it and all. But I'm still surprised that uh, the, you know, fan of Phoebe, sorry about that. That was a burp. <laughs> And he goes, oh, um, because of this. And he just transformed to his rebellion form. You know, silver hair, white eyes, piercings, you know, ripped shirt, uh, pants, boots, chain around his arm, you know, and all that. And he just says, amazing. You know, so he showed, I mean, so basically, it's going to be more of a, he says, well, since it's you guys, you know you're going to be the fan of Thieves, we should give it more of a punk roster look. So he just starts to draw, and Deku just says, yeah, add like a little bit of like some like music over here, a guitar over there, and you know, and everything. So there's the Phantom, you know, the Phantom Thieves card now. And so they, uh, you know, he decides to get to work. He just starts like, you know, drawing it out and everything. And well, he always carries something around with him just in case, you know, something like this ever happens. <clears throat> Sorry, I just trying to clear my phone, but yeah, so that's what he does. He basically makes the Phantom Thieves card right there, and they, you know, they you know, liked what Deku said. So he combines, but he also liked what Rin said. So basically, he combines both of them together. And what happens is, you know, he says, all right, so just, you know, you guys already know the details, right, of the... How to get the treasure for the palace to change one's heart? He goes, yeah, I think so. Um, Ryuji, can you explain it again, though? Do you know what Izuku Deku asked? And he goes, all right. So to change one's heart, we need to basically 
have this card to make sure that his treasure is, well, known it's going to be stolen. So, he'll go there right away and, well, you know, it'll be physical. So, we'll see what it is. And he goes like, alright. So, you know, that explains it and then it should change his heart. So, what happens is Deku and Kirishima for the next day... Um, they, well, for that rest of the day, they just hang out and talk, get to know each other a little bit more, and he tells him about his, like, his old mom, like, how she was and everything, and Kirishima just says, I already hate her already, he goes, I know, right? <laughs> she goes, yeah, so, um, so basically what happens is, you, Yus not you, um, Kiyoshima just, you know, says that you know, you're always gonna have my, I'm always gonna have your back no matter what. I trust you, and this is like activates a um, confidant, and this like makes a confidant, basically. And it is the same thing like, re like Ryuji's um, confidant, basically. Uh, give me a minute. The chariot. So yeah, and you know other thing happens the same, and well, I'm gonna say for the unique skill, it is. Well, this is to help him out with the shadows, so, yeah. So, anyways. After that happens. Deku and him, you know, just spend the whole their day hanging you know, out, and that's it. And then the next day, they work on gaining a little bit more levels and more items and such. So, that's like for until, that was like 11, so they go to... No, wait, no, no, no. That night, he shows him Tartarus. And Tartarus has a main key theme to this. So, just wanna, I want to just, like, give you a hint for a reason why. You'll see later on, but just a hint. Tartarus is a key in this, for one reason. But, yeah, anyways, so... After that, you know, they uh, just go start going through. Um... Uh, they go through the 10 levels until, like, they get to their dead end. They ask, like, how do we get in here? And there's a weird paper saying in here saying you had to defeat the palace to get up farther in. And he goes, <laughs> so just like mementos. And Ryuji says, yeah. Oh, he says codename slide. They talk about the codenames too then. And that's it. And, you know, they go back down and boom. Like, they, they leave the dark hour. They rest. Um, so they go into back into the TV world. Tay gives them some challenges, like defeat five enemies in one shot, and do this and this. So, that's what they do. Um, they get the items that Teddy gives them, some items that they can sell too. So, yeah, so they leave, they go back to the weapons shop, they sell the items, and what happens is, um, you know, they get money. And so, after that, they... Do do something, um. You know, Kirishima. You know, he he basically gets a uh, let's say since Ryuji had a shotgun in the game, um, Kirishima is going to get something manly like a rocket launcher. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, everyone. No, Ryuji's gonna get a basically. Hmm. Sheesh, hold on. Let me, let me try to think about this. I just noticed I've been saying Kirishima while I'm talking about Ryuji. I, I mean, I mean, I meant, uh, I meant, I got my, it switched it around, sorry. I meant, I've been saying Kirishima as Ryuji. You know, no, Ryuji as Kirishima, but I really mean Kirishima, not Ryuji. Here we go. So, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I couldn't think of one. I just freaking, we're going to give him a miniature rocket launcher. And... No, we're going to give him a Gatlin gun. Yeah! Uh, it's a... And, you know, they asked the weapons guy. They asked, you know, him about, Hey, you got anything from my friend that... And he goes, yeah, something that's manly. He goes, what about shotgun? And he was like, um, eh, not really on that. You know, as... I don't know how Ryuji was able to, like, you know, fit the freaking shotgun and everything else. Okay, I just really thought about that. How he's able to fit those rocket? I mean, the... The machine, you know, the, um, the Gatling gun in. Yeah, that won't work. Okay, we're just gonna give him a double barrel shotgun. No. A shotgun that has four different barrels, but it turns around. So, yeah, four barrel shotgun. And he goes, well, you know... He says this is a... He basically, he brings it out to him. He was like, well, how about this shotgun then? And he goes like, but I said I don't want to... Oh my god, is that a four-barrel one? He goes, yeah, four-barrel shotgun. Oh, you like it, kid. He goes like, why are you giving us this? He goes, oh, they're not real. They're not only, like, you know, airsoft. They just look really real. <laughs> so don't mind it. Just don't use it on anyone in real life. That's all. I was like, all right. So, you know, he takes it and they leave. And, you know... And then they, you know, just hang out. Um, Izuku sees Jiro in a music store. Because that's where they went to. Just to see if they can get some music. And, well. Daku sees, you know, Jiro. Who was like, hey. Um, have I seen you before? She goes, no. What, who are you? I was like, oh, my name is Izuku Sakura. This is Kirishima. And my cat Ryuji. It's nice to meet you. And she goes, oh, it's you know, nice to meet you too. My name is Jiro. He goes like, so what's a uh, cute girl like here, you know, you doing in here getting music? She goes, you know, she's blushing. And she was like, um, <laughs> thanks. I mean, you're the second person to ever call me cute. And he goes like, really? Why is that? She goes, most guys don't think I'm, you know, cute. It's, you know, they think I'm weird. It was like, oh, those guys are stupid. And Kirishima just says, Zuk, no, I mean, Sakura bro. <laughs> like, what are you doing? He was like, you know, you can say my first name. He was like, okay, Zuku bro. <gasps> what are you doing? He was like, what do you think? I'm flirting. He was like, you suck. <laughs> he was what do you mean I suck? I haven't been, I never ever actually flirted with a girl before, so excuse me. And she was, wait, really? He goes, why? He was like, um... For the longest time, I was quirkless. And, well, I've been, let's just say, ridiculed and made fun of and hurt a lot by people. So, yeah, I never really had a chance to ever get to know a girl or, you know, get a girlfriend, unfortunately. And Kira just says, okay, that's harsh. Who were they? Let me talk to them. Tell them how wrong they were. They should give you a chance and all that. It doesn't matter if you're quirkless. As he says, Kirishima, Kirishima. It's okay. I mean, remember I did told you I didn't unlock my quirk because I'm a late bloomer. And, you know, she goes, really? He goes, yeah, it's an element based one. I didn't really show it in mine because I really think I could get in. But for some weird reason, um, I was asked to come into the, you know, take a retest. Just to, for the combat portion, and they allowed me to get into being in the support course and hero course. She goes, really? He goes, yeah, I don't, I know, like, I just probably know I'm going to be in class 1A and 1B. She goes, huh? He goes, oh, I know Nezu. She goes, oh. He goes, yeah, I told him I unlocked my quirk. And after the whole entire exam, and he wanted me to see if I could have been a hero. And, yeah. She goes, that's that's awesome. Because he was like, <laughs> yeah, um, do you mind if I, uh, you know, have your number? She goes, really? He was like, yeah, I really do like talking to you. And I don't really have that many friends. I mean, I do have some, but not many. <laughs> I was like, quirk wrestling and all. She goes, mm, sure. 
I had to get to know you too, Izuku. He goes, all right. So, you know, she gives him, she gives him her number. He gives her his number. So, you know. And, you know, he, they were by it all because Kirishima found a song that you can listen to. Same thing with Izuku found a well, song CDs. So, yeah. So, they go and pay for it. And, you know, they leave. Now, the next day. After that. Because they just wanted to rest. So, after that. Boom. They basically sent out the calling card that morning. Addressed to Bakugo. And when Bakugo, like, basically... Bakugo's mom, Mitsuki, says, Bakugo, you got mail! He goes, shut it, you old... You know what Bakugo says. You old hag. And I'm not saying anyone... I'm not... You know, I'm just saying what he says in the anime. I swear. But anyways, yeah. So, what happens is... You know, he opens up the letter... And it's the Phantom Thieves. The Phantom Thieves looks like a steampunk version of it, but with the hat on and still the the mask. And then he, and then he reads. He goes like, "We are the Phantom Thieves. You know, and you, we have came back just because of you and this world and all that. You know, because you have used your quirk that for misuse on people that have weaker than you and such. And we will shall steal the you know steal something from you and change your heart." We shall steal your heart and everything. And Bakugo goes, uh, you know, basically cognitive version of himself. Basically, he says, huh, "So you think you peasants can steal from me? I am the king of everything. Nobody is above me. No one. Let them come. I'll squash them." And yeah, and then you know they're on high alert. But since you know there, there's a um, there's a re- I you know room to rest in. You know, like in the regular world, like a safe, like a um safe house for them to go into, and a castle, and a palace. You know, so Ryuji was there outside the window when he saw that. He was like, <laughs> "All right." So and Deku and Kirishima were there. You know, when Ryuji comes back, he was like, "All right, let's go." So they go, and what happens is you know, when they get to the palace, they're just saying like, "It's showtime." And boom. You know, like, they just go in. They feel the atmosphere is very different. And he says, and, you know, Ryuji says that's because it's on high alert. He goes, all right, code names from now. You know, Sly, Fane, Shark. Goes, right. And, you know, they just go. Like, they just go to the very, you know, last safe house before the treasure room. And when they get there, they see a freaking statue, a statue of Bakugo on a, on a, on people's like head. they're just on top of people just laughing as they says oh my god we're gonna get a third person and you know Deku and him with Deku and you know Kirishima you know notice that Ryuji's just like going on to it just like hugging it all just like Morgana did but you know they're able to lift it up surprisingly and like move it all the way out to like the throne room and then they you know they just hear a, they just like see a explosion happen right in front of them as, you know, they both, like, let go of it. As it's in flying. And then Ryuji... I mean, not Ryuji. Um, you know. And then, you know, Kirishima goes like, Oh, great! It's the Pomeranian! And he goes, as, you know, Izuku just says, <laughs> I know! This is gonna be too easy, though. As though there is, you know, Bakugo. He goes like, So, you're the thieves who have wanted to steal my, you know, treasure. <laughs> my precious item." I can't believe you. All of you. All of you worthless people. And then Deku just says, Huh, please. You're the person who thinks you're above everyone else? Tch, I already know three to four people who are above you. The Phantom Thieves, before us, us, and All Might. And maybe Izuku Midoriya. And he goes, Tch, That nerd, he is not above me. No one is above me. And he starts changing. His transformation is of a giant version of him, but who also looks like All Might. He looks like All Might a little bit, because that was his idol, so that's why he wanted to be strong like All Might. Like, I'm doing, like, his child thing, so, yeah, the whole entire childness part of him is there still, so, it's like, All Might is his idol, so he changes into that. But it looks like a more grotesque version of it, like, mixture between them. It just looks weird. And basically, he just has, like, swords or, like, suddenly appear out of nowhere. And he goes, like, 
<laughs> and Yomi says, Come at me, you peasants. And Daku just says, Man, I never thought he could get any more uglier. As Kira just says, Yeah. What level he's supposed to be? He goes, I don't know. But we're like, I mean, I'm too overpowered right now, so then yeah, we can beat him in just a couple of rounds. He goes, Yeah. So. Deku brings out, um, you know, so they start off with just basically bare fit, you know, basically their weapons. Deku using his, um, he basically, you know, has Thanatos. Not, not, no, he has Izanagi. So his weapon, he, he basically chains it, it, it right then and there to the Blade of Izanagi. Which surprised Kirishima, he was like, Hey, Fang, how are you able to wield that? He goes, just easy. Because um, there's like a handle, and because the handle is so big, old, he says, just watch. As in this, he just slashes at it, and it sends out a, basically a thing of um lightning going near him. Which some um, surprise Bakugo. And what happens then is... Basically, um, he does not get stunned. He goes, why you? You're supposed to be, you know, weak and pathetic. How are you like this? And he goes, huh. well, no, no, no. He doesn't know who he is. He goes like, you know, you're both, you are a weakling. You're not supposed to, be, supposed to be stronger than me. You know, because that day, like, um, not take out half of him. That took, like, a good chunk of his health. He goes, eh, Easy. I'm better than you in every way. He's just like eating. He's just making Bakugo's ego go even like big. And then you know, so Kirishima, you know, it's Kirishima. Well, it's you know Bakugo's turn as he you know throws a sword down to the ground that makes an explosion happen, which hits them, and they they have like a little bit of a burn effect, which then um Sly's persona he uses has a bit of a uh, healing. No effect on it, like he has a healing quirk. I mean, not healing quirk. It's like a healing effect on it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um. Sorry, I'm just trying to look for something. Um. Like I, I never told you guys, but. Have my game out when I'm doing this because of the personas. But anyways, um, yeah. So that happened, and well, that was surprisingly, you know, that surprised him. Um. Which he said, says, so I didn't know your persona had a healing. It was like, yeah. It also cures any status effects like burn, sleep, or you know, confusion. He was like, huh, that's good to know. As then, you know, Deck, I mean, Sly so already had his, like, had already the weapons he needed. So basically, his is basically just a cane. And, well, you know, his actual, not his persona, but his actual weapons, a cane. And then his, um,. Is actually still a slingshot like his father. So, you know, basically, then it's Bako's turn again, and he just like says, <laughs> um, Royal Advisor, you come here. As then Deck, you know, a version of Deck comes out, as you know, he goes like, Tell me about them. He, you know, Deck, who, like, you know, cognitive version of Bako's mind, says, Well, they, they seem to be having, one of them seems to have the, you have like a quirk of healing, and you know, and you just starts. He just starts mumbling on as then Baco, the version of him. I mean, you know, he just hits Baco. Just hits the cognitive version of him. He goes, "Focus, stop mumbling, you worthless nerd." It was like, "Yes, sire." As you know, as Baco, Baco just saying, "So that's what he thinks of me, royal advisor and servant." <laughs> well, who knew he he considered me so highly. As in Deku, I mean, basically now it's, well, 
Kirishima, and then you know he activates his quirk, and then his persona. Um, no, he activates his quirk, and then he um, then activates his like persona, which increases all of their defense. And he goes, "What seems like one of them has a quirk, and then he also has the defense. He probably has some other properties too." As then he just starts some, um, you know, list and everything, being more reserved now, which he goes then basically it's Baku who. He decides to start reading, then his um, focus goes up after reading, and he goes like, thank you. He goes, yes, sir, and everything happens, so, yeah. And then he just says, all right, he's a Nagi. Let's use one of your, let's use that attack. As I never said that he's, like, um, he's Nagi's, uh, Lightning ability did increase to to basically a, a Xenoga. Yeah. So it has increased to becoming a Xenoga. And what and then basically it hits him is not well working. As then you know if I could go just uses the fence and it's just a whole bunch of people that come out of nowhere and defending him. And Deku just says, Tch. Always using our people as your own shield, huh? That's how pathetic you are. And Baku says, I am Kane. Everyone should be on my you know, beck and call. And that just pisses him off even more. So, and then, you know, Kirishima just says, Hey, could you and Kane let me go? I was like, sure. As then, you know, he basically he goes, Buffalo! As somehow it's able to, um, he's able to like switch out who, but you know, it hits Bakugo, which it does like get them to go down. As then Deku says, huh, so that's his weakness, huh? As then he basically says, all right, pass. As you know, the baton pass happens, um, which Ryuji says, huh, I never told you guys that. And he goes, like, eh, figure we could. And then, as you know, he says, um, Mabufo? No, um, yeah, he says Mabufo. Mabufo, um, and it hits all of them, which actually decreases all of the enemies into nothing. He goes, What? As you know, as in, he goes, Sire, I will protect you. And you know, he gets in front of him, just saying, I'll fight you all. And he goes, No, you nerd, get back. As Deku's wondering, What? He goes, I am the king. Everyone's supposed to be le leading on me for help. I will not let anyone get hurt. He goes, by anyone else. He goes, sire, I know why you do this. Why you treat everyone like garbage. It's because you want everyone to be safe. No one to get hurt. That's why, isn't it? He goes, you, you nerd. You're not supposed to know. He goes, I won't let you get hurt no more. I promise you that. As you know, then the cognitive version of Deku starts to change into an, into all my version. I meet like a little version of All Might. He goes, I am here. And then Deku just says, <laughs> Alright. And then he just, he just says his own, he says, Zio. And then, boom, it just hits him, you know, down to him. He goes, What? And then they just throw a hold up. And he goes, like, Tch. So, you really think of Izuku Midori as your servant slash advisor. You, he's the only reason why you want to become a hero, a true hero, right? He goes, shut it! I do not comply with weaklings! He goes, and then Kirishima just says, Quit it already and start telling us the truth! Be a man for once! As then Ryuji says, yeah, you act like you're ev everyone's better. But in reality, you're just a scared kid. He goes, yes, I am. I bully everyone just so that way they stay safe. I'm supposed to be strong. How am I supposed to be strong when everyone doesn't take me seriously? I just want them to understand. But they won't, so I hurt them. As in Deku just says, besides Izuku and Doria, he understood completely and yet you still bullied him. Because he looked down on me. Like everyone. As in he goes, maybe he looked up to, up to you until you started bullying him. And then he goes, what? 
as in always, and he goes, huh, doesn't matter. Let's do it, guys. And then they all just do an all-out attack. And the all-out attack is basically them. Just like Instead of, like, you know, doing the Persona 5, Persona 3, Persona 4 way, it's just them just rushing in and just, like, starting, like, start punching one, using their weapons, start hitting them. Like, it's just, like, pretend it's, um... Pretend it's like a, you know, they're just trying to fight each other, but there are people are getting in the way and stuff. And then, like, all three of them just go to each corner of, like, where they're, where Bako and the commented version of Zuku is. And, boom. You know, there's just an like explosion. And they just go, like, <laughs> right. As, Zuku, as, you know, Izuku's, like, finished thing, they're just holding up, like, the rock star finger. There's a... And, like, they just take a pose after that, basically. And, and you know, basically, they won because Izuku was overpowered, so, yeah. And he was like, no, I was, I was supposed to win. As, you know, the content version of Izuku, even though it was started, his tree goes, I won't let Kachan down. And he goes, no. You know, it's he's back into his, you know, content version of himself. So basically, um, he made, what happened was though the trophy did like you know come he basically did grab the trophy when it flew, so yeah so it got smaller, and then basically what happens is um they just um you know, Izuku just looks at the kind of version of himself and just says just rest, you done enough. He goes no I he says. Rest. I just chops him back enough, which made him disappear. And his Baku says, I failed. He goes, no, you didn't. You let your ego, you let everything about you get in the way of everything. You had a perfectly good friendship, and you threw that away. As then he, you know, basically, he just saying that while he's walking over to Baku. As then he just grabs him and pulls him closer and says, you let Izuku Midoriya alone. Feeling like he was worthless and nothing. He lost his mother. She abandoned him. Abandon him, and you still knew, and you still treated him the way he, that he was. If you were a true friend of him, you should have been there for him, comfort him, at least try to talk to him. But no, you just had to let your ego get in the way, didn't you, Bakugatsuki? And Bakugatsuki says, "Yes, I did." How am I supposed to change? He goes, "Apologize first. Tell him the reason why behind it." Explain to him, and just maybe, just maybe he'll start seeing you as a friend. Got it? As then he just shoves Bakugo onto the ground. He goes, yes. I'll, I'll return to myself. Thank you. He goes, <laughs> we're fan thieves. As he grabs the trophy off the ground and says, that's what we're supposed to do. Let's go, guys. As they just start running off and... Bakugo says, you know, the content version of himself goes, <laughs> Fan of Thieves, you guys are heroes. You saved me. And, you know, he just, you know, goes back to himself. You know, as the, you know, the castle is falling down, you know, falling apart, like, and can't, like, you know, what happened in the, you know, Persona 5 game as Kanoshina, Kanoshina's castle. You know, but they were, you know, they're a little bit faster, so he's, they get up pretty quickly. <laughs> And, you know, and then you know, the Manitos app says, location cannot be found anymore. And boom. So that's it. And they say, so what's the treasure like? As then it's a limited edition Oh My card. You know, basically, like, Ryuji says, why is that? He was like, you have no idea how much money this is worth. He goes, what? He goes, yeah, this is a limited edition. You know, it's in plastic. Basically, this is worth over a lot of money. You'll find it. Well, I'll show you. He's like, all right. You know, so they go back over to um, the back over to La Blonde, and you know, she asks, "So how was it?" As they show the card, and he goes, "What? This is Bakugatsuki's treasure all along. This is where it all started. All might." She goes, huh. "So that's the reason why he thought he was better than everyone." He goes, "Yeah." Uh, we got school tomorrow too. Great first day. But anyway, so they look up how much the card was worth, and then it's like worth, worth like two 
million yen. And, and Hiroshima just goes, oh my god, that's a lot of yen. It was, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, you know, what are we going to do? Celebrate. Sell this off and get some money for it? He was like, heck yeah. He goes, yeah, we can probably have a feast or something. That's a job all done. And what do we want to go to? Barbecue, ramen, um, here, just have a party here. It's a job well done. So, they, you know, they didn't know the side on it after, you know, school and all. They're tired, though. That fight was pretty hard on them. But they said, eh, if we will, we'll just keep getting stronger and everything. We're going to, you know, go up. Um, I never said anything about Ryuji. Ryuji's is near the same level as Kirishima, but he is about three levels higher than Kirishima. He was, like, in the level 20s. So, yeah. Anyways, um, so, they basically, you know, and basically they go up to Izuku's room. He was having more, all my, you know, stuff, and he was like, oh, yeah, um, I, actually, no, I, I used to. My mom sold it all, but the size of my card collection of, of heroes, I got plenty of all my cards, too. He was really, he was like, yeah. So, basically, he pulled out a card book of it. I was like, oh, my God. He was like, I know, right? So, how much are all these worth? I go, all together? A couple, th- couple of million? And even to the billions? I was like, really? He was like, yeah. Eh. But who knows? So, I mean, basically, um, they talk and chat, and then, uh, you know, Ryu Kirishima goes home. Um, Deku puts out a, you know, all my, you know, the card on, I mean, they basically said, we're going to go to the, you know, weapons shop, you know, Iowa, and get some money for this. And was, yeah. So, that's what happens. Um, well, and they go to bed, and, well, then it's, um, the whole entire, you know, UA, so... So, I mean, so basically, they all go to Yuve, Kirishima, Deku, and Ryu, you know, Ryuji. Uh, so, Deku goes over to see Nezu. Like, no, 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 no. So, you know, they're all going. I'm like, Deku's getting ready. He says goodbye to Futaba. Futaba says, you know, just, you know, be safe and you'll know, be careful. Have fun at school. He says, I will. So, yeah. So, he goes over to Yuve. He meets up with Kirishima. You know, they go in talking. They see Bakugo. And he says, Oi, Deku! He goes, yeah, he goes, I gotta tell you something. What? He says, I'm, I'm, you know. He goes, you're what? He goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> there was a plenty of reasons why I had it. I did that all. But, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you, nerd. He goes, yeah, yeah. If you want me to be your friend again, you're gonna have to. He's like, why am I being one of these friends with a quirkless loser like you? It was like, whatever, Bakugo, Kotsky, whatever. It was, <laughs> whatever, Izuku. So, you know, after that, you know, Bakugo just, like, started talking. He was like, so, how you, so what classes you are in? He goes, here, of course. He goes, what? How? You're, and then he just showed some lightning. And he goes, so you had a quirk all? He goes, nope. Activated dude because of stress. And I'm because I'm a late bloomer. I was like, "What do you mean stress?" Oh, um, suicide. Because wait, what? He goes, "Yeah, I almost died." So I activated. I found after stress happened, I got angry. I punched the wall, and actually, you know, my fist was on had lightning going off of it, and fire, ice, wind. I, I didn't, you know. <laughs> and he goes. Oh, was it, uh, he was sludge villain. So what you mean? Yeah, All Might saved me. I asked him, he said I couldn't be a hero, but Nezu believed in me, and I know Nezu. I told him about my quirk, activated, and he, so I didn't apply to the hero course, so I got in the UA because he wanted me to do what I could see with my quirk. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, I want to see who's stronger, me or you. Got it, nerd. He was, yeah, whatever. So that happens, and um, they get to one A, you know everyone. Um, but first he says he has to go see Nezu, so that's what he does. 
And Nezu asks him about what were those, you know, things that he could summon. So he explains about the personas and all that. Um, he gets, while he's talking to Nezu, he gets a text from Elizabeth saying that he would, they need to have him come over to the Velvet Room when it is done. You know, when he's done with school and all that. He was like, he texts back saying, all right. He goes, who was that? He goes, oh, just the people that helped me and gave me this power. And this power can only be used by people who who are chosen by fate or something or by quirkless people, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I mean, curious, my, someone else has it, but, it, but you know, my partner. Um, I have to save the world or something, I guess. <laughs> and this he goes, what? Without a, he goes, there are no hero license where I, what I do. These are things that I have to do that the law cannot get involved in. I was like, tell me about it. He goes, like, we're all cognitive. He goes, like, cognitive? Oh, no. Oh, God. Izuku, please do not tell me. I was like, yeah. He was like, all right. Since you are then a, probably a phantom thief, I will not get involved, but do not let the law find out also. Um... I'll support you in any way I can. He goes, thanks, Nezu. And that is when, you know, the social link happens. I mean, not just... You know, I'm going to say, like, something to do with, um... Hold on. Okay, so I'm making him the Arcana, the Devil Arcana. Um, I think it will work, because he can be a mischievous sometimes, I think. I feel like. Um, so, yeah. I just think it will work. You guys can tell me if it doesn't. But, anyway, so yeah, so he goes, I'll help you out anyway, give you any information if I find anything down on you. You know, like, if the, you know, police are on to you or not. He was like, alright, thanks, Nezu. And, you know, he just walks out. And Nezu just says, ah, Zuko, cool. please, not getting any danger. So, yeah. So, he gets to his class, you know, Kirishima Bako just asks, so what did Nezu want to, you know, know just, um, just ask more about my quirk and all. He was like, oh, alright, well, Kirishima knows the truth. Um, he sees Jiro, Jiro, you know, sees him, he goes over and goes like, you know, Jiro comes over to us, Izuku, goes like, he's up, she goes, how are you, I was like, good, you, good, I'm surprised you're in here, you know, I says, eh, I knew I was going to be in here, and Izuku probably want me to get the best schooling, he goes, really, he goes, yeah, he's been like a, uh, not like a father figure, but, um, he's been like a grandpa, sometimes, he has like one, um, he's just not like a family, so yeah, I'm a, you know, because my mom's not really around. She goes, oh, um, did she, uh, die? I don't know. She abandoned me. Um, my, uh, mom, my real mom, I call, I say she's my real mom, because she asked like one. Um, Futaba Sakura is my mom. You know, she adopted me, and, uh, Sojiro Sakura is my granddad. My grandpa. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, um, yeah. So after just talk for a little bit, Arakiro comes in, you know, late like you late like in canon. But um you know, everyone starts talking and then Aizawa, you know, open, you know, comes through the door and says and they were then everyone quiet, so then he says, Alright, it took you about thir ten minutes to be quiet. That's not good enough. And, you know, he just gives out the speech about, you know, they're gonna go to the ball, you know, Go outside and, you know, do a quirk assessment test and everything and all that. And everyone's like, oh, like, why and all, you know. And, um, basically, uh, um, Iraq is exactly the same thing, you know. And he says, we don't have to go there because it's saying, like, normal school. And by the way, if you guys don't go all out, I'll, you know, I can kick everyone out of the class, you know, expel them. This is how the school is. Don't question me. Blah blah blah. Um, so you know he holds up the uniforms and he goes switching these and Deku just Deku Kirishima and Bako just walk out. Jiro follows immediately. So yeah. So you know Jiro started talking Bako to Kirishima. And you know so they get changed and everyone's coming in. Bako sees Deku. Kirishima sees Deku and De and Bako's like, what the heck, nerd? Like. How? It was like years and years of training. He was like, what? He was like, yes, I've been training for years. Before middle school. So. Yeah. 
fight me. He goes, all right, as then Deku just throws a punch right into Bakugo's face and boom, knocked out. And then Rush, you know, he's just coming up back up. He was like, okay, that was a lucky shot. And he goes, <laughs> yeah, your nose is blue. And he was like, ugh. So, you know, Bakugo just, you know, wipes the blood off and his nose isn't broken. And he just says, that's very disrespectful of you, blah, blah, blah. And he just says, I think Bakugo and Deku just says this, shut it, four eyes. And that shocks everyone. Kirishima just laughs. And then Deku puts on his you know, shirt and everything. And he sees Mineta. And people did notice the tattoos on his arms. Well, and they're like wondering, what the? He goes, what? Did your mom like you? Know, did your mom allow you to get that? He goes like, yeah. Have a problem with it? He goes, yes, yeah, so very much so. He was not supposed to have tattoos. And Deku just says, look. Just something just goes, okay. Quit, having, quit talking to me. You're annoying. I don't really like you. Blah, 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 blah. That's all I hear from you. I don't care. And then he goes over to Mineta. He basically says, So, pervert. You like having fun looking in the hall? He was like, yeah. We can see that. And Deku just grabs him. He goes, I'm about to electrify you in about four, I mean, 0. 0.5 seconds. You know, 0. 0.5, you know, 0. 0.5 seconds. If you did not move from this hole and, um, you know, go away and leave them alone. Got it. He goes, yes, sir. And, you know, he puts him down and he just goes out and Deku says, ah. Hey, has ever dared about to do something? Move your head or body away from the hole. And was Jiro did his move and next thing you know, hit the, there's a fire coming right through the hole. As in the hole sealed up. He goes, there, you guys, your girls are welcome. He just leaves. And um, Jiro tells the girls, the girls are thankful to you know, Deku. When you know everyone gets out, all the girls are looking at Mineta. Is that, Azawa says, I don't want to know. As Deku then just says, eh, freak it. He just electrocutes in Mineta. <laughs> Mineta says, I, I wasn't. He goes like, I don't care. I just thought it would be a lot more easier for me to do it right now and just tell Izawa. He was being a pervert. There was a hole. I, you know, he looked in my fruit was to the girls' locker room. And um, I closed up. You're welcome. He was like, all right, Mineta. If you never do that again, you're expelled. He was like, yes, sir. And so, so anyways... The tests happen, um, Bako was in first place, so, Bako's, that's for, he's like, it's the same thing in canon, no, he gets a little over, same, same thing, like, 800, and then Deku, you know, everything goes somewhere to canon, but Deku gets a better score, he's gonna be around fourth place in this one, so, along with Kirishima's gonna be around fifth place, so, yeah, and Nezu has told us all, you know, Izuku has a cat named Ruji that's around. Because he didn't notice a cat was in his bag. So, he doesn't care. So, yeah. But anyways, um, Izuku basically, when his turn for the throw ball, he basically puts around, he just has fire, lightning, and wind. And it's just like spinning in his hand. He just like grabs it and then he says, Alright, go! I'm gonna throw it with all my might! And he just throws it as then he basically... When he throws it, it basically just shoots like a rocket. And it goes up to a thousand meters. And Bakugo just says, The heck? I... What? He goes, You work on mostly on your quirk, not your body. That's why. He goes, Alright, nerd. I see how it is. I see it. <laughs> just smiling. And, yeah. So, he says, Alright. He shows the scores. Bakugo, um... Uh, First, first place, Toroki, and mm, I said fourth. Let's bump up to a third. So third place is Zuku, but um, you know, then Kirishima, and then one else. Mineta is still in last place. Mineta's about to be kicked out. Yeah, no, Mineta gets kicked out. Just because we're being a pervert. <laughs> so yeah, Mineta's kicked out, and then hold on. Hold on. Alright, so the person um, who's replacing Mineta is kind <clears throat> It is going to be. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, let's just say it's going to be. Uh, no, it's going to be Shinso. Shinso is going to be there. So, yeah.
So Shinji is going to be the replacement. All right. So that's where I'm going to end it off. It's already been like over an hour and 30 minutes. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but yeah. So anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video and all. And um, everyone has a nice day. You know, stay safe, everyone. You know, bye.